Welcome. Hey, right. <laughs> Welcome to Between the Covers, the show for readers and writers and lovers of books. I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, book publisher and developer, and head penguin of Red Penguin Books. We're a publishing company that works with authors of all genres, so whether you have a manuscript all ready to go or maybe something that's just been kind of knocking around your head and your heart for the past decade, Unleash your inner author and visit us at redpenguinbooks.com. A big thank you to our sponsor, Don Pablo Coffee. If you're an author or even a reader, you know that you need a really good cup of coffee so you can get to that final page. Don Pablo Coffee, where each bean is individually hand-selected so you're always getting a fabulous cup of coffee. You are in for a huge treat tonight because we have not one, not two, but three fabulous authors who were all writing for a cause. So please welcome Joe Satriano and Lisa Strauss Lawrence, did I say that right? And Stephen Taibbi. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, first things first, now you are official members of the Between the Covers TV Club. Um, and you too can join the Between the Covers Club. Just go to betweenthecoverstv.com and sign up. All of our members, well, for one thing, you get wine if you come here. So you really want to do that. You'll also be able to borrow any books from any of our authors because we have a library. You'll get free books and, and newsletters and all sorts of things. So if you would pass those down, I wrote your names on them. Uh, I am so official. Okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> now you have to read my handwriting to make sure you get the Thank right you. one. So yes, it says you get wine, you get cheese. But any of you, come. When we're filming here um, from 7 to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays, come. We love audience. So I called it writing for a cause because all three of you were not just writing because, you know, you had poems in mind or something. You were writing for a higher purpose. Um, what made you do a book for all three of you? You know, like there's a lot of ways to, to honor a cause, and we're going to talk about different ways, but, but a book, was that like a tug? Was that a, I have to do a book? Lisa's nodding her head. <laughs> sure. Lisa had yeah, to do a book. Yeah, that, I had to do a book. Number one, I wanted a support book for people who were going through the same thing. And number two, I needed to raise money. And I needed to raise money for Les Garden Foundation. That's bad. So I absolutely had to do a book, and I was inspired by another book that I had contributed to. So um, for those reasons, absolutely. Yes, well, we, we, I had asked you for, you know, what are you reading now or book recommendations? And this is it. Recovering from the Loss of a Parent in 1985. And that particular book was published by the phalantologist Catherine Fair Donnelly. Right. And that book, after it was published, was distributed by the Funeral Directors Association to anyone who had lost a parent. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, is that how you came about the book? Because of the loss of a parent and that's when you yes. were given it? Yes. Okay. So um, I contributed to the book. Did you really? I did. Oh, I did wow. my stories in there about oh, my father that. having died of a massive coronary at the age of 57 on vacation. Oh, God. In I'm Toronto. Sorry. And that's 35 years ago. <gasps> oh, I am sorry. Thank that you. must have Thank been you. so shocking. It was. And I was in a great support book, a support group, and that thalontologist needed people to contribute. Right. So, so after seeing the effect of what yes. a book could yes. do for the support yeah. you said that's it yes I got to write a book I did. well uh, you know a huge shout out to Catherine Fair mm. Donnelly who I have never met but obviously made a huge impact and on no longer life. alive really? but she wrote recovering from the loss of a child too <gasps> and recovering from the loss of a spouse oh really yeah. she's just she just she was amazing she was an amazing woman wow yeah. And, and I hope she's having a lot of coffee and wine. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it inspired another author, too, so I'm thrilled about that. Thank you. Joe, did you always know it was going to be a book? No, actually, mine was a journal. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, four people at my wife uh, Sue's wake after she battled cancer for 13 years and passed away in 2005. Uh, four people gave me a journal and said, start writing, Joe. It's good for you. And uh, I was a former high school math teacher. What do I know about words? Um, <laughs> Numbers yeah. only. Right. I could tell you my book's pages are numbered in order. Oh. They are, yes. I'm going to count now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can count on you. Uh, but but um, so, yeah, I, I started writing about a year after Sue died uh, with not the intention of making it a book. But then don't ask me why I did this, but I took the journal to Sue's breast surgeon who hadn't seen me in 13 years. And after doing eight hours of surgeries uh, at, at Winthrop Hospital right. uh, at 9 o'clock at night, she called me into her office. 
she ab ab obviously had read things that I had written because she underlined things. Right, she wanted right. to go over things. Now, this lady is an incredible, wonderful lady, very staid, very, very much in the box. You know, I guess after you do uh, eight hours of breast surgeries, you know, it kind of gets to you a little bit. Um, she got to a part in my journal where she started crying. And I said, boy, if I can affect her that way, maybe my book can affect others. Wow. And, and that's what truly when it became a book. Right. And then life, everything changed. And then, yes. You know. Then, for instance, uh, I, I would put post-its on my walls in my house, always carrying a pencil. Uh, you know, and as soon as I thought of a thought of some sort, right, right. I would just find the nearest post-it and put it down on there. A now, post-it writer. Thought, I thought it was a great idea. My cleaning lady hated it. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> she was wrong. Yeah. Stephen, did you know it was going to be a book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from yeah. day one? Yeah, from day one. Well, for you, day one was like when you were five. You're going to be telling us Actually, this. I've been wanting to write this book for many years. I mean, uh, back before I had my first heart transplant, I wanted to write this book. But there were certain things that I knew I had to really be honest, so I didn't write it. Oh. Uh, not about me, but about others who might have been involved. Right. So, um, but then people started, you know, really getting on me. You got to write a book. You're at it. You know, it was like being married ten times. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote the book. So you wrote the book. Well, I am so grateful that all three of you wrote the book, um, not just because I know that those books are out there and they're touching people and they're raising money and they're doing amazing things, but just for what it did for you. You know, that's just huge. So, uh, so if you're watching us tonight, write the book. Absolutely write the book. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. <coughs> Do you have a book, either in your head or on your desk, just waiting to get out to anxious readers? Hi, I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, book developer, and head penguin at Red Penguin Books. We're a publishing company specializing in books of all genres and publishing in all formats, including digital, audible, and print books. From business books to romance, memoirs to mysteries, our authors have complete control over their books from start to print. We'll help get your book to booksellers all around. Major booksellers such as Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Walmart, even libraries and bookstores around the world. We believe in our authors. So call or email today to get your free publisher's packet to get started. Just visit us at redpenguinbooks.com and get your book out there and into the hands of your readers. At Red Penguin Books, you call all the shots. So call us today and turn your dreams into a reality. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Joe Satriano wrote a fabulous book in sickness and in health about his relationship, love of a lifetime with his wife and and since then has done so much more than even just write the book. You have a foundation, you have all sorts of, please. I've amazed myself. Uh, oh, you amaze me mo constantly. Really? Constantly. Wow. Uh, <laughs> no, I, and I'll take the money for that later. <laughs> I can't keep paying people off, uh, but no. Uh, yeah, I, I um, after Sue passed away of a 13-year battle with breast cancer, um, and we were married for 29 years. 
Um, and you did I, all that when you were still a teenager. I mean, she passed young. Correct. Yes. Uh, well, she, she was um, uh, 53 when she passed away. Yes. Uh, uh, diagnosed at 40. Um, yeah, I, it took me six months to kind of get my head together. Uh, if anyone wanted to find me in the Latinx, the past six months of her life, or as soon as she died, um, I was under my covers in fetal position crying Can't all day, feeling sorry for myself. But uh, I had this epiphany, and I said, you know what, I'm, what am I doing under these covers? I wasn't helping anyone. Sue and I were both high school math teachers, so we always helped people. By the way, you know what the best thing about being married to a math teacher is? What? We multiplied. <laughs> yes. How many children? Uh, we have two. <laughs> See? We multiplied twice. We multiplied twice. Yes, yes, and and it was great. And you know, our life was idyll idyllic. It was just wonderful. And then when she died, so I was two math teachers. So if you got tired marking all those things, you could just pass them right over. Well, yeah. Who I, balanced the checkbook? Uh, neither of us. <laughs> <laughs> It was never balanced. I but. mean, tax day was two days ago. I figure you're the type of family that was right Johnny on the spot, not online at 4.28 like <laughs> I was getting the postmark. Well, it was a very taxing day for me, I'll tell uh, you that. But, but I'm fine. Uh, but, uh, so, yeah, so I, I got my head together six months after she died. It was like a lightning bolt hit my head. And I said, what am I doing under these covers? Nothing for anybody. And I started the foundation, the Susan Satriano Foundation. Fabulous. Notice the double S, kissing uh, at a pink heart. Uh, when I developed that, by the way, math teacher used creative side of brain to do this. Now, oh. that's, a, that's an oxymoron, you know, because there are no creative math teachers. Oh in this no, world. no, no! I think but, that I love the I love the pin and I love the logo. Now you created okay. that? I did. When I when I took the S in Satriano and flipped it on my computer screen and moved it together with the S in Susan and it formed the heart, I said, "Stop right there, Joe." <laughs> <laughs> At which point I did look up to the ceiling and I said, Sue, thank you for being named Sue. Wouldn't it work with the heart? Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, what was her name? It was Clarice. Or, or Ophelia. I was dead. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so um, I knew exactly who I wanted to target with this foundation because Sue and I always saw the devastating effects it had on our own two boys to watch their mom's 13-year demise. So the kids have to meet three requirements to get the award. Uh, these are high school seniors. Okay, high school senior. Who are going to graduate. Okay. Number two, they have to be going to a college in the fall because it is a scholarship for their higher education. The third is the kicker, which I hate asking them, but I have to. Uh, they have to have a parent who's either passed away of cancer, presently battling, or in remission. These kids never get noticed. I could tell you that from my side of the desk when I was a teacher, all you get to see are grades dropping precipitously. They're not thinking of school when, the, when no, there's a death or a not. diagnosis. So I give them their moment in the sun. They need to be recognized for what they've been through. Uh, the best part of what I do more than the scholarship that I give them, by the way, last year I helped 255 kids with scholarships. 255 last year? Across the nation, Across yeah. The nation? Um, uh, and in, in the 13 years I've done this, I've just reached a million dollars in scholarships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So over I can't thank you. Million dollars? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it it's sad too because it indicates how many of these kids exist. You know, I, I and and the million dollars was spread over fifteen hundred kids across the nation. But the best Yes, thing you're right. It is terrible is that fifteen hundred kids qualify for what you just mentioned. Correct. Correct. But thank God for you and the foundation. Uh, thank you. It's not about me, really. The, the well, hero, the heroes, you're, the, you're the mover behind the foundation. Thank you. Uh, I, I, the, the heroes in the operation are the kids. And the best thing of what I do, truly, is I go and talk to every single one of them. Even I, the ones across the country? Yeah, those I do Skype interviews. And since I know you well enough, I'll tell you that all I do is get dressed up, waist up. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to know. It's they don't have to know that. Correct. Nobody's watching this show right now, right? Oh, so then we're fine. <laughs> let, me, let me really tell you that. No, no so, um, yeah, so I've, I've helped uh, districts in California and, and Utah and, uh, and, and Florida and um, Texas. A million dollars to yeah. 1,500 students. Yeah. It started with wow. Sue's life insurance check. Really? I, I took it uh, back in 2006, and I divvied it up amongst four kids in Oceanside, my home district. And it's grown into, it's mushroomed into what I just told you. Wow. It's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so, then I wrote the book, which, which even f continued to amaze me. Right. And the best part of the book, truly, is that, uh, by the way, I've been told it's such an easy read. I'm going to start handing crayons out with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, but, no, the best part of the book is that 100% of its proceeds goes to the foundation. And since the book's been out, the foundation's grown by over $20,000. Well, I wouldn't say it's an easy read as much as I 
couldn't stop reading it. Wow. When well, you thanks. sent it to me, I didn't finish. And I didn't get up until I finished because well, I wanted sweet. to read the book. Thank you. I, I truly wrote it as if, because I'm not a writer necessarily, but apparently I am because I have a book. But You must be. Yeah, I guess. I um, mean, your name is there. Yeah, somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> It's J.S. Russo. Yes. Yeah, really. So somebody, somebody's name is on. Somebody's name is on this yeah, book. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's it's my pen name, of course. Because I, you're such a prolific writer, you're in the witness protection program. Yeah, you're taking my jokes. <laughs> 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 we know each other too well. No. So yeah, I, I actually, truth be told, my mom passed away nine marches ago. That's her maiden name, Russo. Russo. Always wanted to honor mom. J for Joe. S for Susan. I cover all the bases. You did. You. This covered everything. Yeah. And and like. And if a, you do bad things, it won't affect the foundation. I think it was a smart move. Yeah, they'll blame J.S. Russo. Right, yeah, exactly. Exactly, whoever he is. <laughs> but um, I'm actually writing a second book because I didn't learn from the first one. You know, this one will take, even though it's not a book about loss, it's a book about hope and optimism and love. Sue and I had so much fun pre-cancer, during cancer. We didn't let it stop us, even though it did take her life. Um, I'm writing a second book. This one takes you to her last breath. The next one will take you from that moment on which, by the way, includes the hilarious dating scene at my advanced age. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> but you may like the title, Stephanie. Okay. Because we were both high school math teachers, and it's from that moment on. Right. Ready? After math. <gasps> I like it, but I'm bumped. Thank you. <laughs> I can see the cover already with all the equations and the whole thing going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, it, it, since the book's been out, the foundation's grown by over twenty thousand dollars. It's oh, amazing gosh. how people are fooled by it. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, because inspired. I, it, inspired. Right. Well, usually I perspire people, not inspire them. But but anyway, yeah, yeah. I I have lived a blessed life having Sue in my life, and um, you know, uh, and then she continues to help children even though she's no longer here through the use of the foundation and uh, you know uh, she's she was just an amazing woman who uh, who made me what into uh, what I am in today so whatever for good or bad uh, so yeah um, I've been blessed now tell me a little bit about the foundation fundraisers what can we all of all of our viewers here do well uh, I always take donations okay uh, you know uh, they, and I think we had a slide up Sue Satriano uh, foundation foundation com. Com. yes yep, yep there's a little tab on the side that's there. also on on the website at between the covers TV dot com mm -hmm. is the foundation link so people can go right there cool I also run events okay uh, yeah I'm gonna be running a Beatle concert oh is that this yes it is you're here okay um, I will definitely put this flyer on the website too, but what is it? Um, October 26th, a Beatles concert? Mm -hmm. Strawberry Fields, the best Beatle knockoff group you've ever heard or seen in this world. Fantastic. They dress like them, they sound like them. If you close your eyes, you're going to think you're at Ed Sullivan's Theater. Oh. Back in 1963, I think it was, when they, you know, th th they performed. Uh, as you can see from the poster, they, they do dress up, they do the early Beatles stuff, then they take a little break, and then they do the, the um, Strawberry Fields stuff. Amazing, amazing guys, and they're so philanthropic. This will be the sixth concert they've done for me. We've already made over $100,000. Fantastic. And we need to sell out Oceanside High School Auditorium okay. on October 26th. October 26th. If you didn't get a good look at it, go to BetweenTheCoversTV.com, and there'll be a link right there. That's fantastic. So you do events, you sell the book. Yeah. When do you start assigning these scholarships? Well, uh, I rely on the counselors of every school around the beginning of March. They okay. call me, uh, and they gather up the names because they know the kids. I don't. Right. And we make an appointment time for me to come into the to the schools. I ask for 20 minutes with each child. Uh, it's amazing how they. And by the way, they inspire me. If, you, like I said before, if you're looking for heroes in the operation, all you have to do is come with me with, to one of these uh, interviews. And I put interviews in quotes because right, right. it's not to select one against the other. Right, right. Uh, you know, it's just to give them a chance to talk if they want to. Right. Um, last year, Baldwin High School had 23 kids, <gasps> 23 high school seniors. Yeah, and and I don't turn anybody down. So uh, that's why the number was so great last year. And I don't know what it's going to be this three. year. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. amazing. But, uh, you know, they tell me stuff that is just remarkable. And I go home pinching myself saying, did I just talk to a 35-year-old or an 18-year-old? Mm, yeah. They grow up so quickly because of what they've seen at home right. and how they've dealt with it. And I'll tell you this, too. Being a former high school math teacher, I've done a little statistical analysis. Mm -hmm. Of the 1,500 kids, 
about 90% of them go into give back professions. Really? Yes, like wow. PT, OT, nursing, psychology. And of course, I'll ask them the softball question that they knock out of the park mm -hmm. at the interview. Why do you want to be a nurse? Why do you want to? And inevitably, this is what they'll tell me. I saw how these professionals helped my parent. I want to give back. I've seen this pain. I don't want anybody else to feel it. I mean, that's amazing to me. These are 18-year-old kids, right, young adults, uh, and they, they are just remarkable, they, wow. how they've dealt, you know, with it. So my, it's easy for me to do what I do. It, 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 I'm, I'm not, you know, yes, I'm the face of the foundation. That's all I'll give you. Uh, the, the, the kids really are the amazing ones who just, uh, you know, uh, deserve to be recognized um, and uh, and I, I do my share to try to help them through with a little bit of money and also give them that moment in the sun. I can't thank you enough. Oh, please. Absolutely can't thank, thank you. you enough. Uh, check out the Sue Satriano Foundation and please give to this amazing cause. We're just going to take a break and we'll be right back. It's right, keep it going, keep it going. It's right, keep it going, keep it going. Are you a tie lover? You love the diversity in ties because they come in different colors, fabrics, patterns, etc. Get access to a wide variety of neckties. Buy from or trade with other tie lovers. Don't wear ties anymore? You have more ties than you know what to do with? Want to turn all those ties into real money? Do you just need a tie? You just need a tie for a special occasion. Now you can buy a tie today and sell it tomorrow. The Necktie Exchange, the online retailer where you buy, sell, and trade neckties. Register today. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Our next guest, Lisa Strauss Lawrence, was writing about her husband and pancreatic cancer. Um, since then, uh, this is something that she uses because she is a huge, huge supporter of people and funds and the Lust Garden Foundation, and we are so, so grateful that she's here with us. My hunted down guest, Lisa, thank you so much for being here thank with us today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Oh my gosh, what, and, and what a beautiful book, and, and everybody has to see for a moment. We, you have to hold the book yes. so they can see how you coordinated yes. your clothing. Yes, so this it's is purple. Yes. Everything is purple. <laughs> Everything is purple, and that's the Lust Garden color, isn't it? It is. It is. Pancreatic cancer is purple. That is the purple so color, purple so today. I love that. We've got yeah. the whole purple thing going on. You have a pin for them also? I, I do, I do. There we go. Yeah. I yes, don't know if they can see it. But, to show off all yeah. the pins and the purple, yes. and I'll, I'll just stay all the way over here in my red. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I planned this, so you could sit between the gentlemen yeah, and not, and not with clash my, with my red. Clashing with my red. <laughs> so, so tell me about your husband and your story and how you came about with this. So, we met in Syracuse in 1975. Go Orange We were men. together. Yeah, yeah. go Orange <laughs> uh, We were together for 33 years, oh. have two children. Um, and the way it worked is that... I didn't even know what a pancreas was. I didn't no, know where yeah. it was. I didn't know anything about it. I know it's in here somewhere, That's but right. not really That's much right. more. That's right. And he just wasn't feeling well. Um, and for about four months, he just was totally undiagnosed, which is some of the characteristics of, of that. You know, it's a stomach thing, or you just don't feel well, you don't feel right. 
And finally, um, they figured out that's what it was. Right. And it's interesting because there are certain signs and then there's the certain markers. Okay. Well, his marker, CA 199, okay. was zero. Now, the markers are usually in the thousands. Really? And his marker was zero the entire time that he was sick. So it was. I learned a lot, unfortunately. I bet you knew a lot. Unfortunately. Um, and for the 15 months that he went through this, 15 months, um, I am one of those diggers and researchers. So not only did we go to Cancer Treatment Centers of America to do research, but we also went to the Pancreatic Cancer Day at John Hopkins, okay. which is a day where they just devote to can pancreatic cancer um, right. patients. Um, and he went through all the testing again, and all the MRIs again, and the CAT scans and everything. And everybody came up with the same conclusion. Number one, inoperable, because it was in the middle. Number two, um, he had already had chemo, so he wasn't even eligible for certain trials. Okay. He would only be eligible for one trial, which was a trial number one, clinical trial number, clinical one. Trial number one. And his decision was, I don't want to be a guinea pig, and I'd rather just live out the rest of my life. I understand that. And so we went through the life and the death and the process, oh, um, and he died at home, which was our choice yes. on hospice yes, I and all. That. That was very important to us. Yes. And during that time, I took that time to celebrate his life. Um, very important. People came, and we watched videos and pictures, and oh really did a beautiful. How wonderful! And when he really was lucid, made, yeah. we also did a book um, about him that I gave to my children. So it was, you know, what did you do when you were young? What did you enjoy? Oh, nice. So all his memories yes. when he was, you know, cognitive enough to talk. Right. So we did all those oh, things. Oh my gosh. And then we had a memorial service, and um, he wanted to be cremated. And so um, here is my dove. Dove was really important to us, and these are a few ashes from oh, him. And you can wear and the it rest, with you. I wear it once in a while. Oh. Uh, but I'm the rest of the ashes, the, I wore it tonight in honor of him. And the rest of the ashes are up in Syracuse. We met at Syracuse. And there was a special place called Chittenango Falls, which was an amazing, beautiful place that we would go for all the different seasons and seeing those, that gorge and the, yes, the yes. waterfalls. So the rest are over there. Oh, what yes, a wonderful yes. tribute. So after this happened, though I had been prepared, you're never prepared. I mean, goodness, it sounds like you really <laughs> was prepared. It did sound oh, like yeah. way. Very I mean, I don't know planned. how you could ever really be prepared, That's but right. boy, you, and when I was reading it, I was like, wow, yeah. she's doing all these. Yes. You sounded like yes. you were prepared. I need, yes. And so I created a memorial website for him called the eternalportal.com and it's in his name and I added to that and I we do virtual flowers we do virtual candles just something to right, sort of right. keep him and his yes, memory right. there um, and uh, and then I said I need to do something else okay. who's doing research I knew nothing about this disease who's helping people go through right, it right. Um, I found a listserv online and I started sending out information, messages to everybody. And I said to them, what'd you know and what'd you go through? And then I decided that I would write a book. And so um, I said the best way to do this is to interview families right. and go through the process. And I would chart out what this outline would look like right. before cancer okay. and then all the way at the end. And so that's my chapters. So I ended up with 20 families. Wow. Which are amazing from and, all and that's over the United families States. Who were able to? Yes, yes, all over the United States. Really? And it included my son, and included someone else out in Minnesota, and her daughter. Wow. So there were people who had lost spouses. There were people who lost parents. Right. There were people who lost uh, siblings. Okay. Different people. Um, and I have all the families outlined in the book, and each family got information uh -huh. and questions during that time period and it took about a year or so to get all the information collected to get the pictures in right, and to right. have it exactly the way I want it to look. So I published it and decided that it should go for two foundations. One was PanCan out in California okay. and one was Les Garten here. PanCan is no longer really part of what I do okay. but Les Garten is. Les Garten. And so I've gone to of course the marches, the marches and, and, and they've been amazing and yes. supportive um, and whenever it was sold the money always went to them, any royalties went to them, etc. It's still on Amazon all Fantastic. this time. Fantastic, yes was, I saw. Yes. That's and where was, I got the pictures for the website yes. on Amazon. And just to be symbolic here I want to point out a few things. Sure. One is it was published on September 3rd, 2010. And September 3rd, 1975 is when we met. And September 3rd, 1977 is when we got engaged. Oh. And so September 3rd, 2010 was an important date. Of course. So that was important. And then the other thing is that cover. Yes. So that cover was done by a graphic designer 
who was the daughter of one of the people who died. Oh, really? Her father. So it was her mother who was the contributor, but I asked the group, did you know anyone who would do a drawing? And she said her daughter was a graphic designer. And she submitted three to me. I said, it had to be something about letting go. Right. We were all holding on, but we need to let go. And she came up with this, wow. and I said, this is it. This is that exactly is what, I, what I need. Yeah. So um, the book is, is what I want it to be. Um, and I started thinking lately about, okay, it's a family affair. Pancreatic cancer is a family affair. Yes. But you know what? Where are we now? Right. Just like Joe. Yes. So pancreatic cancer, families move on, is what I'm wrestling with right now. Yes. So out of the 20 families, uh, the four survivors, I have one survivor still. Wow. Down in Florida, which is amazing That's after amazing. all these years. It's been 10 she, years? It's been 10 years, but she had it even before. So she wow. was diagnosed before, so she's doing really well. Battling a few things, but still moving right, right. on. Um, and I found out that another one had died in 2016 and not of pancreatic cancer. Really? He had done very well, and he had died of something else. And the two others we lost. One in Huntington, by the way, and the other one in, in another state. Right, right. So I've contacted the families, and I'm trying to find out whether we want to do a second book. Right. Number one, I'd really like people to see that we move on, that yes. our lives go yes, on. Absolutely. And in fact, my husband told me. And that's such a hopeful message. It is people. a hopeful message. He told me before he died, promise me you won't be alone the rest of your life. And that's what he said to me. And, you know, and I have, and I have. And I think it's a struggle, obviously, the of first course. few years of and all. Of course. It's a huge, when you're together for so many years, you're that's a couple. That's your whole life. You were, you were, you know, teen romance. Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. But, and so much of life has happened now. And I want people to see that there are many things that happen in your life. And of course, it's not going to be the same. No, and it's not, no, you know, no, but it's, you're not trying it, to be the that's same. That's right, that's right. But life that's does right. go on. It does go on. And that's, go on. And that's a huge message. It is. That it you, is. you come through, you know, I, I think that when you look at a book like this, you yourself and your families can read this and say, oh my gosh, that, that was me. Yes. But I'm here. Yes. I'm here and I go on. And I think it's a fabulous idea. You know, I, I'm not necessarily surprised that if you had 20 families before, that not all of them want to participate. And, but for those that do, half, half are, are on the page of, yeah, my life goes on. Yeah. And that's a huge, huge message. That's a huge message that, that you, Joe has to say, you know, this, is, this was a, the darkest hour. Yes. And now we're sitting here and putting it towards a higher good. Yes. That's just amazing. Did you read the back of the book? There is a beautiful, and I have it on the website, on his website, Memorial website, on the back of the book, the rabbi who wrote that. Yes. That is a beautiful thing yes, for all of us to think I'm going to read that out loud back, if please, you don't mind. Please do that. At the rising of the sun and its setting, we will remember you. At the blowing of the wind and the chill of the winter, we will remember you. At the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we will remember you. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of the summer, we will remember you. At the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of autumn, we will remember you. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember you. For as long as we live, because you were a part of us, we will remember you. Rabbi Sylvan Hammonds. Thank you. That was beautiful. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody get up when you're feeling down. Everybody get up, turn your life around. When you trust yourself, you have the power to make up your life. Studio 1031 is an environment where excellence is always expected. We work with all types of people from all walks of life. We give deserving women something that they wouldn't give themselves. Come join this makeup movement. When you're feeling down, turn your life around. Make up your life. Do you have a
a book, either in your head or on your desk, just waiting to get out to anxious readers? Hi, I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, book developer, and head penguin at Red Penguin Books. We're a publishing company specializing in books of all genres and publishing in all formats, including digital, audible, and print books. From business books to romance, memoirs to mysteries, our authors have complete control over their books from start to print. We'll help get your book to booksellers all around. Major booksellers such as Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Walmart, even libraries and bookstores around the world. We believe in our authors. So call or email today to get your free publisher's packet to get started. Just visit us at redpenguinbooks.com and get your book out there and into the hands of your readers. At Red Penguin Books, you call all the shots. So call us today and turn your dreams into a reality. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Wow, we have heard from so much tonight. I'm just beyond the beyond. Our next guest, Stephen, Stephen Taibbi, is not someone who is writing about a loss that he suffered when he lost someone. He's lost parts of himself. So please welcome Stephen Taibbi. Thank you. Stephen, thank you so much for coming. Uh, your story is just amazing from the moment you were born. And I just, you know that I thank God every day that you're here. And when you were a little bit late getting to the show, I was like, you're okay, right? You're okay, right? <laughs> but literally from the moment you were born, faced with unbelievable difficulties. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, I would recommend you read the book. I mean, uh, yes. <laughs> Buy the book. It's on Amazon. Buy the book on Amazon. Um, but um, no, I mean, I had Okay, my, but you'll give us a little bit of I a, had my a, first three operations spoiler. the day I was born. I had. Um, yeah, most of us spend the day we're born just kind of lying there crying. Right. But no, you were in surgery. <laughs> I was crying three a lot. I, uh, I bet you were three operations. Then, um, when I was five, I had uh, an open heart surgery for what they call ASD repair, which is everybody knows that as a hole in the heart. And back when I was a kid, the survival rate was 50 percent. And then I, the next year, because they found I had another hole in my heart, I had the second operation, my second open heart, when I was six, and that was. Um, at that point, the survival rate was zero. I was the first one to live through two. And, and with all due respect, these open heart surgeries weren't last week. They, I mean, medicine. 58 and 59. Yeah. It was way different. It was way different. Um, so you actually went into an operation at six years old. Did you know that the survival rate was zero? I didn't know the survival rate was zero, but I knew I was in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, you know, my parents were told I wouldn't get past 10. Then I was told I wouldn't get out of my teens. Um, I had um, one of the, I had a, and this was before Kubler-Ross wrote her book. I had no idea, but I had an out-of-body experience on my 17th birthday. Uh, then they told me, um, no, you're not going to get through your 20s. And then I got through my 20s. And then my doctor said, I don't know what you did, but you're cured. You did it. You're, you're, you're fine. And uh, and, you know, I had a, a business by then, and, you know, I got married late because I was smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw this at you now. <laughs> I, my wife, I am so lucky. I mean, I I, I know your wife, I and she's right, lovely. I she puts up with right, a lot. Yeah, she seems nice. No, <laughs> she's, I, no I waited. I, I waited. I, got, I was married when I was 35, I think. Um, I think. But it was it was worth the wait, and it was, you know, she, Rose she is wonderful. She was absolutely worth the yeah, wait. She is wonderful. And um, then, you know, we're married for a while. I changed careers, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm gaining weight. I was always thin. I'm gaining weight, and I can't move. And 
uh, one day I'm walking with um, a friend of mine and um, I live in a very hilly area and I almost collapsed and they found out then that my that I was in end-stage heart failure and I had um, actually contracted um, a virus Really? Uh, yeah, it, my, I lost my, my natural heart, which had gotten cured because I contracted a virus. After all of that? After all of that. Because I really think that God is trying to make the point that he's a jokester. <laughs> and you know what, you know, that, that famous quote, you know, God's a, God's a comedian who, and uh, to playing to an audience that's too scared to laugh. <laughs> Except I get his jokes. They're hysterical. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm like, uh, sometimes, and I think that God's up there with a big medical book going like this. Oh, he hasn't done this one yet. <laughs> so <laughs> A virus. After two open virus. heart surgeries, a virus. A virus. So and then, a transplant. Then I needed a transplant. Right. Um, <clears throat> that lasted about... That, that heart lasted 15 years, almost to the day. Um, I, I, I um, got that heart on the 27th of, of, of March, and I got my new heart on the 9th of March. So it didn't quite make it, but, um, but it got me through, you know, and uh, I had my last heart transplant three years ago. After four years ago, I had a massive heart attack due to um, rejection. But the book I wrote because since I was a child, I was using strategies to survive. Right. Even, if, even when I wasn't as cognizant of things as I am now, but every time something hits me, I come up with strategies and, and decisions and, and, and um, just an idea that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna beat this. Right. And I know that I may not, but the idea is I'm at least gonna go down swinging. And the book is um, is really for people who are who have profound illnesses, not just the heart, right. who have any kind of profound illness. That you know strategies that they can use to get through. I use it through my story. My story is an analogy, but all through my story is the strategies I used, how I am in hospitals, what I do, yes. how I treat doctors and nurses, and, and things that you would be surprised people don't do. Right. Um, and I want you, them to do that. Even you mentioned to me about. Uh, the clothing that you wear in a hospital. Oh, yeah. And how that affects... It, I had a doctor tell me that he actually wanted to do a study on what I was doing because, he, you know, he'd noticed that people who did what I did, which was, I wear street clothing in a hospital. I will not wear a gown. I, unless I... There's sometimes when you absolutely have to. But if I'm going to be in the hospital for a while, and I've had long hospital stays, I'm going to be in, like, sweatpants and a shirt with a pocket. You know, and this, this way, if they have to have a monitor on me, instead of hanging it around my neck, I put it in the pocket. And if they want to, you know, check me out, they just open my shirt with, you know, right, right. button-down shirt. And, and, and one doctor was saying, you know, I, I believe that patients who wear street clothes get treated differently than people who wear gowns. Right. Because we see you in street clothes and we, and you, suddenly you look you're like different. a person. You're a person. Not right. a patient. You look a person. And I, I'd been doing that for years. I've been doing that since I was 17, 16. So, you know, I think it also does a lot for your own oh, self yes. when you're there. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. you're, you're already telling, because in a way you're saying, I'm not that guy. I'm, not I'm a different guy. Right. Treat me differently, you know, yeah. and, um, and just, just for the audience. Um, and I cannot believe how many people do the opposite of this. But if you're going to be in the hospital for any length of time, short time, long time, doesn't matter, make sure that you're the patient the doctors want to visit. Not the, not the one that they dread to visit. Mm. I, I, we were in the hospital. We saw a woman who was so angry at the doctors that they had to have three security guards come in. Right. Now, how is that going to help her? What is that going to do for her in the future? First of all, it's like yelling at a cop, right? It's, it's you know, hey, hey, he's got a gun and a pen. What are you, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> what nurses and doctors, they have things that they can stick you with and not be gentle with you with. And... You know, and maybe not care about you right. because you've made it so, you know, you're nasty to them. Mm -hmm. So whoever comes into your room, you thank them profusely every time. I mean, I get it so that the janitors, you know, housekeeping, I think it's called, they want to come into my room and I'll say to them, thank you for what you're doing. I know you're helping keeping me alive because you're keeping my room clean and keeping it clear from germs that could hurt me. And I want you to know how important I think your job is and how nice I think you are. Bobby, is that a caller coming in? Oh, 
Do you mind? We have a oh. caller coming in. Hello. Welcome to Between the Covers. Hi. Thank you. Hi, this is Judy from Rockwell Center. Question huh. for Joe. Hey. How do you raise money for that foundation? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Joe, it's Judy. She wants to know how you're raising money. Thank you, Judy, for calling. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I run events. I sell books. I sell T-shirts. I sell pins. I, you know, I, I do. I, I'll be on the corner of. Uh, no, no, I'm only kidding. Well, somehow he's raised a million dollars to give to 1,500 kids. So. Yeah. Well, I, it, donations. Wow. Are great, you know. Wow. So yeah. Um, Judy, have you come to any of my concerts? I have actually. Uh, they're fabulous. I think wow. you're 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 you're, you you're very well connected with uh, some wonderful people that make uh, the event uh, most successful. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Judy, I know there's an event coming up in October, and yes. anything else will be posted at at uh, www.susansatrianofoundation.com. Susansatrianofoundation.com. Okay. Wow. Judy, thank you That's so much for being a supporter. That's huge. <laughs> My pleasure, and I look forward to, to, uh, to the next uh, fundraiser. Judy, if you want to sign up for my mailing list, I don't, Joe, do, do you have a mailing list at the Susan Zatriano Foundation? I do. Good. There's a mailing list there. That's even better. I was going to say to sign up for mine because I'm going to just ask Joe to send me stuff. But okay. if you go to SusanSatrianoFoundation.com, there's a mailing list, and this way you'll be right on the list. And that goes for all of our viewers. Get on that list Wonderful. so you can get information Wonderful. about the events. Okay. Thank Great. you so much for calling. Thanks, Judy. Well, well, you're very welcome. All right, and bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Sorry. That's, oh. hey. That's great. We're not sorry if we're no. getting some message out That's there. That's wonderful. Absolutely. So tell us about um, what the title, Grateful Guilt, what does I, that mean? That's because um, when you're a recipient of an organ and if you're a normal person. We um, have another caller? We have another caller. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Welcome to Between the Covers. Thanks for calling. Hello? Hi. What was your question? Hi, caller. Welcome to Between the Covers. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for calling. I, you're very welcome. Is there anything I can help um, you with? Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. Sure. What What can I help you with? I want... Um, Am I on yet? You or? are. You are on the air. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was watching and I turned down the volume because I didn't know if that would affect. <laughs> no, so no, I'm, I'm glad you called. Time. What is your question? Yeah. And, and we've got uh, hopefully somebody here who can answer it. Okay. I want to commend all your guests because they're amazing people who want to help and tell stories. So I thank them all. Oh. My question is for Mr. Satriano. I read your book and it's, um, it's quite amazing. It is an easy read. Um, I laughed, I cried, um, and I am looking forward to your next book. I do have two questions. Can you give us any tidbits about what you want, we might see in the next book? And my second question is seeing and talking to all these kids that have had difficulties in their life. How does that affect you? And how do you deal with having all of these people, these tough stories that you have to deal with? Okay, so the first question was, what do you see going into the second book? Well, yeah, some tips about what he thinks would be in it. Okay. And really, how do you feel? And with then, how do you feel the, when uh, you speak with these students? With all of the tough stories that he. Excellent has to deal questions. With. Thank amazing. you, Joe. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll take the second one okay. first. Okay. Second one first. You're uh, allowed. It actually is very inspiring to talk to these kids um, because they are, they have dealt with a situation that you wish no one ever had to face. Of course. Gosh. Uh, and they faced it in their young lives. And the fact is, is that they have moved forward. They never forget. Um, and they actually, as I said before in my little segment, was that they, they inspire me uh, by how they've dealt with it, uh, how they're going to move on, how they're going to give back in this world right. uh, by what they want to do. Uh, so to me, that, that's the best part of what I do more than the money I give out. Right, right. The fact that, that I get to learn about my heroes, those kids. That's nice. Yeah. 
Uh, the first question was... It was, what's going to be in the second book? Oh, well, that, that I think actually... Boy, everyone's trying to push for second books. The second book from Lisa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, we, have, we have messages uh, that are very important. To Absolutely they are. Um, I, and we want a second book from Stephen just to make sure that he stays alive here with us. <laughs> Um, I, I would say, well, I know for a fact that the first book has helped a number of people only because I get emails and, right. and phone calls from people who have read it. Um, I think my second book is actually going to help people more than the first book. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's very rare that you get a guy who spits out his guts about losing a spouse. And, That's true. And, and then how they dealt with it. Um, you know, my kids and I, how we started from this abyss, and I mean really way right. down low, to where we are today. And I don't uh, suggest that people do it the way I did it, but um, I explain my journey uh, and how it got me to where I am today. Uh, definitely the foundation has helped tremendously, uh, but I also listened to Sue a lot when she told me what to do after she died. Right. So, you know, having a celebration for her 30, 30 days after she died. You know things like that. Um, it, um, it was just. Uh, it, it will. I believe it will uh, bolster people who are down right. and out. Um, hope, like we were talking yes. about. Me too. It's a message yeah. of hope yes. that there is life. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that's a fabulous, fabulous message. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for calling. We're going to take a quick break, Thank and then you're going to get back to telling us about guilt. Me llaman Tan Pablo. Y hace más de 20 años me enamoré de una colombiana. Viajé a su país y conocí un estilo de café muy distinto, muy especial. Ahora tostamos cafés excelentes, con alturas y microclimas diferentes, resultado en una taza muy compleja y muy rica. Un sabor nuevo en el mundo. Fue un éxito. And I even got to keep the girl. Inspired by aerobic classes and a dream, Body by Tamika has helped hundreds of women reach their fitness goals. One size doesn't fit all and neither should your fitness experience. Body by Tamika is about creating an environment where women can come together to work out, meet new friends, and get inspired. Whether you desire to lose weight, tone up, or prepare for a mommy makeover, Body by Tamika is here to help. Body by Tamika is considerate to female weight loss challenges resulting from pregnancy and or life changes that can be extremely resistant to diet and exercise. For stubborn problem areas, Body by Tamika offers non-invasive aesthetic procedures such as laser lipo and wood slimming body contour. Book your free consultation today to see for yourself. Are you a tie lover? You love the diversity in ties because they come in different colors, fabrics, patterns, etc. Get access to a wide variety of neckties. Buy from or trade with other tie lovers. Don't wear ties anymore? You have more ties than you know what to do with? Want to turn all those ties into real money? Do you just need a tie? You just need a tie for a special occasion. Now you can buy a tie today and sell it tomorrow. The Necktie Exchange, the online retailer where you buy, sell, and trade neckties. Register today. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thank you for joining us. We were here with the author Stephen Taibbi. Stephen, why were you, when you wrote the book, what are you hoping to accomplish? Were you hoping to touch? What are you hoping will do? Well, you said well, first I want to get back to grateful guilt. Yes. Because it's an important point. It is. Um, People who receive organs, especially people who receive organs where the other person can't be still alive. Right. You know, like, like a heart. liver and kidneys, you can still, you know, you can be a live donor. But when you get a heart, you get lungs, you get some other organs, um, um, you know that the person has passed. Yes. And you get guilty about it. Sure. You're, you're incredibly grateful, but you're feeling guilty. And, and you know, you think, um, 
you know, and everybody will tell you that person didn't die for you. That person was going to die anyway. But that's all blah blah blah, yeah. because in real life you're just feeling guilty. And I had I had severe survivor's guilt for the first seven or eight years. I can't can't even imagine the guilt of feeling that, you know. And you're right. That person was going to die anyway. But he's beating inside your heart. Yes. His, no, his heart is beating inside well, me. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My heart's gone. My heart's in a jar at home. You have your heart in a jar at home? Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm not going to your house anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't care who you are, what guy you are. Valentine's Day, you can't beat me. Well, this is true. you got a real heart. I actually gave my wife my heart. Oh, my God. Top that. This is why I'm glad we're not married, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you like people to do when they read? Become organ donors? I think everybody should be an organ donor. And, and the shame of it is, and I mean the shame, New York State is the last state out of 50 states for donation. Are we really the we're, last? We are the last. Okay, do you hear that, that viewers? That is pitiful. That is pitiful. It's shameful. Absolutely. And, and not only to become an organ donor, but please tell the people closest to you so that they... Right. Whether you want to be a donor or not, make the decision. Do something about it. Whether right. it want, means to sign up to be a donor, right. then tell your family. Or if you're not going to sign up, and then tell your family. So that, God forbid, something happens to you, and your family doesn't is asked that question. They know what the and answer And they don't is. have to struggle to figure out what the answer was. That is so Save hugely them that important. Pain. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I know you can get Stephen's book at GratefulGuilt.com. I know all of our author's books are available on Amazon. And uh, if you forget anything we said tonight, you can go to BetweenTheCoversTV.com. There are links to all of their foundations, all of their events that are coming up. Buy the book. We are so inspired by these authors. So please, take what they've done here and embrace it. And if you're going through a hard time in your life, I think we've learned that writing is really, really cathartic. Thank you so much for joining us on Between the Covers.